Hello, and welcome to the channel. My name is Nathan, and today we are doing our 12th class overview for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. And today we are covering the Warlock. Now, at the kind of the core of the concept, a Warlock is a powerful spellcaster who learns their abilities and gains their magical powers from some kind of act-type relationship with a patron of some kind. Now, uh, here is our agenda for this video. I'm going to kind of give an overview of the core class and what I believe the role of the core class is. Then I'm going to discuss all the class features from level 1 to level 20, and I've broken this down into five level sections to make it easier. Importantly, in this video, like with all of my class overviews, we are not going to be diving deep into what all the subclasses do exactly, although I will give kind of a general outline of the themes and um, abilities of each one. Then I'll talk a little bit about multi-classing the Warlock and then go into some summary and some ratings of the Warlock core class as a whole. Now, I love Warlocks. I've used them a whole bunch in a lot of builds. But today, let's talk about what the core Warlock does. So class overview and role. So the Warlock is a charisma-based known caster, and they are short rest based. Now, the main thing that's unique about Warlocks is they have a limited number of spell slots. Uh, all of your spell slots are the same level, and all of your spell slots come back on a short rest. Now, the role of, 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 of the Warlock, at least the core class, is generally to be a backline sustained damage dealer and controller. So due to the nature of the class having not very many spell slots, um, you generally want to focus on a concentration spell and cantrips because you might only be able to cast two to three um, leveled spells per combat depending on um, kind of how you've built your Warlock. One of the other things that I love about Warlocks is they are extremely customizable, probably more so than any other class. Um, they get a feature at level three that's almost like a second subclass, and there's all these little things that you get to take along the way called Eldritch Invocations. You, you end up getting a total of eight of them that allow you to kind of pick and choose these kind of interesting class features for your character. Um, another thing that's important to note here, they are rather limited on their known spells, and so they should make pretty liberal use of spell retraining and spells that upcast well, um, and you should be swapping out your spells as you, you level up. Now, the way that that works is you can retrain one spell each time you gain a, a, a Warlock level, so you can replace one spell that's on your list with another spell that you could potentially cast at your current level. So, let us dive in and talk about the Warlock's class features beginning at level 1. So, the hit dice of a Warlock is a D8. This is the relatively standard hit dice for most classes in the game, um, and they share this with other casters in uh, the Bard, the Cleric, and the Druid also have D8 hit dice. In terms of armor proficiencies, they're uh, proficient with light armor, and they are also pr proficient with simple weapons. Um, as such, the core Warlock class is generally... Um, going to want to prioritize charisma as as is their casting stat then you'll probably want a good dexterity so you have at least some semblance of an armor class and then, then probably a good constitution for hit points and to be able to maintain your concentration spells because that's going to be what's going to be very important for your character they don't get any tool prof tool proficiencies and they are proficient in wisdom and charisma saving throws in terms of their skills the Warlock gets two skills from the following list, Arcana, Deception, History, Intimidation, Investigation, Nature, and Religion. And one of the things that I think is interesting about Warlocks is that even though they are a charisma-based class, they have all four of the intelligence primary kind of knowledge skills on their list. And one of the general flavors of a Warlock is you're someone who is seeking to gain more power through knowledge, and you are learning from a patron of some kind. Now, in terms of their class features at, at level one, they get Pact Magic. This is the Warlock's special spell casting. So at this level, you only have one spell slot of first level, but it comes back on a short rest. You get to know two cantrips off the Warlock list. Now, the Warlocks have a very heavy cantrip that's unique to the class called Eldritch Blast um, that is very powerful and is probably the best sustained damage cantrip in the entire game, um, sp specifically because as you gain... Um, levels unlike other cantrips it doesn't gain more damage dice it actually gains more attacks so the thing that makes it unique is that any damage riders that you have will get to apply multiple times to eldritch blast because it fires multiple beams and the core class has ways that you can improve it which we'll talk about pretty soon 
Uh, they can use an arcane focus as a casting focus for their spells. And at this level, you get to know two spells and you and your casting stat is charisma. Now, you all Warbucks also get their other worldly patron or their subclass here at first level. Now, all of, of the Warlock subclasses have subclass spells. So at each level um, that you get new spells, so one, three, five, seven, and nine, um, each subclass adds two spells to the list that you could potentially could pick. Um, they don't give them to you for free like other classes do, but, but it, it gives you some additional options. And then they usually have some kind of core class feature here. Now, usually the core class features aren't um, that, that you, you get level one aren't they aren't usually things that carry through and improve as you go. A few subclasses have this, um, but generally speaking, um, it kind of leans into the flavor and the nature of your pact. So let's talk about what, what kind of otherworldly patrons are available. So there are, are quite a few. From the player's handbook, we have the Archfey. So you are basically um, bound to an entity um, out of the Feywild. We have the Fiend. So you have a pact with a devil or a demon of some kind. Then we have the Great Old One. Your pact is with some kind of uh, eldritch entity or power. Uh, from Xanathar's, we have the Celestial. Um, the Celestial, you have a, a bond with some kind of upper planes uh, or good aligned or lawful being. They suggest um, perhaps a unicorn or something like that. This one is a little more healing aligned. We also have the Hexblade. In this one, you are bonded with an entity that presents it to you as a form of, in the form of a weapon. Uh, the Hexblade is one of the most powerful Warlock subclasses and is pretty nefarious for use in a lot of um, multi-class builds as it is a very effective dip. Now, out of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, we've got the Fathomless Warlock. So you are bonded to an entity of the deep ocean and that kind of thing. It has a lot of themes around tentacles. I've used this, this class in a build and it's been pretty fun. And you also have the genie warlock out of Tasha's. The genie warlock, you are you are bound to a genie of, of some kind. There's a bunch of different ones that you can pick, and the subclass spells are actually different for each one. And there's some other benefits. This is a pretty powerful one. And then out of Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, we have the undead uh, patron. This one, you are bound to an end, undead entity like a lich or a mummy or perhaps the lich queen Blacketh or something like that. And then out of the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, you uh, we have the Undying uh, Patron as well. Now, at level two, um, <clears throat> Warlocks get their invocations. And these is a really cool thing. There's a big list of them. And there's a wide variety of options that you can take to customize and improve your character. Um, a lot of them have prerequisites, uh, typically levels, or uh, some of them um, will also have a... a requisite of a pack type of some kind but the general ones that you have available here that don't have any um prereqs are things to for example improve eldritch blast there's an invocation that will let you add your charisma modifier to its damage there's one that will let you push an enemy back 10 feet each time you hit with eldritch blast there's one that slows down an enemy when you hit them there's one that pulls in them closer um there's one that extends the range so th there's a bunch of things that you can do if you want to lean into this really cool warlock cantrip that they have there's also ones that grant spells that aren't normally on the warlock list um some of them you can cast them once per long rest there are some that let you cast certain spells at will and there's also ones that give you passive benefits like dark vision and the, and the ability to see in magical darkness now importantly you can retrain a warlock invocation uh one each time you gain a warlock level so potentially um you should be swapping these in and out depending on how you want to build your character so you have your big power spikes sooner now also at this level at level two uh we get our second short rest uh spell slot and from for a while here we're only going to have two spell slots but again they do come back on a short rest and we get to learn another spell here now at level three uh we get our packed boon and this is kind of almost like a second subclass there are four options available with the fourth hat being added in tasha's so the first is Pact of the Blade. Uh, in this one, you um, are able to kind of summon a Pact weapon and that kind of thing. And uh, this Pact, um, so all of the Pacts have specific invocations that have uh, a certain Pact type as a prerequisite. So the Pact of the Blade, generally speaking, leans more into a spell sword type uh, character. Um, and so, that, for example, at fifth level, the Pact of the Blade has an invocation available that gives you extra attack with your Pact weapon. Um, 
Next is Pact of the Chain. This allows you to summon a familiar and you get a, some more powerful ones than normal, um, namely like the Imp uh, or the Quasit or the Pseudo Dragon and that kind of thing. Um, and this one, uh, yeah, the main flavor is around having that powerful familiar and the invocations that you can get make the familiar more effective and you more effective while your, your familiar is around. Pact of the Tome, it lets you learn a bunch more cantrips. Um, as well as there are invocations that let you burn ritual spells and support and protect your allies and that kind of thing. And this is a good one if you want to go into more of a support type build or just have more flexible out of combat options. And then the new one out of Tasha's, uh, Pact of the Talisman, you get this talisman that in interestingly pr provides benefits to the wearer, but you don't have to be the one who wears it. So you can use this to potentially protect yourself or support a, a, an, a key ally. Now, also at this level, all of the pact specific invocations become available. All of them have one that you can take once you have the pact, so you can potentially retrain them here. Uh, all of the subclasses also add a couple more spells onto your list here at level uh, two. Well, spells of second level here at level three. And the level of our spell slots now increases from first level to second level. So again, uh, all of our slot levels scale like a full caster, but we're only gonna have two spell slots for quite a while. So make sure that you are retraining spells that scale well, that kind of thing. If you get a higher level of, of a, uh, you get a higher level version of a spell that is say more effective, you should retrain away your lower, lower level version to get it and that kind of thing. At level four, uh, we get our first ability score increase or feat and warlocks follow the normal kind of ability score schedule for m most classes having a total of five. You also get a third cantrip here and learn a fifth spell. At level five, we get our third level subclass spells and we get to learn another invocation here. Now, the next tier of invocations unlocks here at, at uh, this point. So some of these include third level spells that you can cast once per long rest, um, as well as some potentially powerful passives and that kind of thing. And the level of our slots is now level three. Uh, now, um, at level six, uh, we get our second subclass feature. These are typically pretty powerful actives, usually once per short rest, um, and some of them are are uh, include passive benefits as well. These usually learn lean further into the flavor of the kind of pact with your patron, and they're generally good to very good. Some of the classes like um, Genie, for example, even get damage, res uh, damage resistance and flight at this level. At level seven, we are up to fourth level spell slots and we get our fourth level subclass spells. We learn a fourth invocation and there is another tier of spells, um, another tier of invocations here available. Some of these include fourth level spells, like there's one that lets you cast polymorph and as well as some more potential powerful passives and or active abilities that you, that you can get here at this level. Of course, all of the, all of the lower level invocations are still available to you as well. At level eight, we get our second ability score increase or feat, and we learn a ninth spell. At level nine, we get we have now have fifth level subclass spells added to the, the list, and we learn another invocation. Um, there's another tier here available. Um, so some of these will give powerful spells. Some of them potentially give you low, low level spells at will, and there are some more powerful passives and actives available. And the level of our spell slots now increases to fifth level. And this is the highest our short rest spell slots will ever get. And we learn a 10th spell. At level 10, uh, we get our third subclass feature. Now, these are typically very powerful passives, and they lean further into the flavor of your pact. The power level on them varies a bit, but they're usually pretty good. We also learn our fourth cantrip here, uh, but we don't get to learn any new spells, although you could retrain again at this level. At level 11, we get our first Mystic Arcanum. Now, this is a feature that is unique to Warlocks, and it's kind of the way they do their higher level casting. So the way that this works is we get to pick a spell off the Warlock spell list of 6th level to be our Mystic Arcanum, and we can cast it once per long rest. Now, the important thing here is that this is not a spell slot. So you can't upcast existing spells to higher level, nor are you going to be able to upcast any spells that you get with your Mystic Arcanum. Also here, we get a third um, spell slot per short rest, um, and this is the most that we will ever have. And we get to learn an 11th spell, and note that this is not our Mystic Arcanum spell, and this spell must be of 5th level or lower, because that's the level that we have spell slots for. 
Also, you can retrain one Mystic Arcanum uh, and replace it with another spell of the same spell level every time you get an ability score increase out of the Warlock class. At level 12, we get our third uh, ability score increase or feat, and we get our sixth Eldritch Invocation, and there are a few here in this kind of next tier. Usually, they're powerful ones that have to do with your subclass. Now, I should mention, in terms of the feats that Warlocks want, you usually want to cap out your charisma, and you want to do something to fortify your, your concentration saving throws, because again, because we don't have many spell slots, we usually want to be concentrating on a powerful spell. So something like Resilient Constitution or Warcaster will be great to help you potentially maintain your concentration on a spell um, if you don't already have that um, save proficiency from another source. At level 13, uh, we, we get to learn a 12th spell of 5th level or lower, and we get our 7th level Mystic Arcanum here. There are a lot of good ones on the list, like Force Cage and that kind of thing, that uh, Warlocks do get access to. At level 14, uh, we get our, our final subclass feature, our subclass Capstone. These usually are a, a, a further leaning into the flavor of the subclass. And usually they are typically a once per long rest, very powerful active, though a couple subclasses do have very powerful and useful passives that, that they get here at this level. At level 15, we get our 8th level Mystic Arcanum, and we get our 7th Eldritch Invocation, and there is a final tier here that has, it, that has the 5th level as a prerequisite. Um, a lot of the ones here um, that you unlock at this point are some kind of powerful at-will spellcasting of a low-ish level spell, like for example, there's one that lets you cast Invisibility at will here. We also get to learn a 13th spell of 5th level or lower at this point. At level 16, we get our fourth ability score increase or feat, and that's it. At level 17, we get our ninth level Mystic Arcanum, and this is our last one, and we get to learn a 14th spell of fifth level or lower. At level 18, we get another Eldritch Invocation. This is our last one, um, and there, you know, the list is the same as we could pick from last time, but you should be pretty set, um, and this is honestly just a nice thing to have. At level 19, we get our 5th and final ability score increase or feat, and we get to learn our 15th and final spell of 5th level or lower. This is also your last chance to potentially retrain one of your Mystic Arcanums if you want to do that. And finally, at level 20, the Warlock gets Eldritch Master, which is their class capstone. What this does is you can spend one minute in treating your patron for aid to regain all of your expended spell slots from your packed magic feature, and you have to finish a long rest before you can do this again. Now, because, so we can potentially recover three fifth level spell slots by spending a minute. So this is kind of like, um, if you don't have time to take a short rest, you can take one in one minute instead of an hour. But I feel like a lot of the time, if you have time to rest for one minute, you might have time to rest for an hour. So the usefulness of this varies. If you've ever used this in a campaign to good effect, please let me know. But in my opinion, this capstone is kind of skippable and i think i might rather have some first level features from another class instead of this capstone but if you've used it again please let me know in the comments i would love to hear about it all right let's talk a little bit about multi-classing the warlock and this is going to be something that's pretty interesting because in my opinion this is actually one of the best the classes that multi-class is best in the game and there's a lot of interesting things that you can do with it so in order to take a level outside of warlock if you are one or to take a level in in Warlock, if it's not your first class, you, you need a minimum of 13 Charisma. Now, if you take a level in Warlock and it's not your first class, you gain proficiency in Light Armor and Simple Weapons. Now, in my opinion, what does Warlock go best with? Well, I think they go best with Bard, Paladin, and Sorcerer. These are the other three main Charisma-based classes in the game, and the synergies that you have with Warlock are pretty uh, easy to recognize, and uh, honestly, uh, this group of four classes, the Charisma-based casters, is a really powerful multi-class group. Now, that said, there are a lot of other classes that um, Warlock can multi-class with that will actually make a very effective character. So it can also work with uh, it can work with cleric. Um, this will give you armor pr uh, proficiency and potentially some kind of support cantrips, as well as some first level features. You can do a similar thing with druid um, if you want to lean more into that spell sword type playstyle. Uh, ha having a bit of fighter on a warlock can be fantastic. 
And if you want to lean more into that rogue with magic, taking rogue levels on a warlock would make total sense and it would actually make for a very effective character. And this would fortify your skills quite a bit. So when other classes take levels in warlock, they can benefit from Eldritch Blast and the invocations that go with it, as well as potentially some short rest spell slots. In particular, um, classes like Bard or Sorcerer or even Paladin that don't have a good range damage per round option, um, you can really make use of Eldritch Blast because you only need two levels to, to really get the most out of it. Uh, you need one level to get the cantrip and a second level to get Agonizing Blast, the one that lets you add your Charisma modifier to the damage of each beam. And because Eldritch Blast is a cantrip, its power scales with your character level, not your Warlock level, so just a two-level dip can get you a lot there. Um, now, the Warlock in particular can benefit from weapons and armor proficiency quite a bit. One of the things about um, the Warlock is they're naturally pretty squishy, D8 hit dice, light armor, and one of the other things is while some Warlock spell classes, uh, subclasses do get access to abjuration spells like shield, uh, one of the problems that the Warlocks have is that they don't have spare s s spell slots to use on, on reaction type spells um, like shield or absorb elements or silvery barbs or potentially even counter spell. So by taking uh, some levels in another class, you actually get those low level spell slots that you can use to defend yourself and you don't have to feel bad about wasting, say, a 5th level spell slot on shield. Um, now, there is more I want to talk about here. So, the first thing is that the Warlock's Pact Magic isn't spell casting, so it doesn't stack um, with the other classes, with the multi-class spell progression that, that you would have with other classes. So, it, if you take levels in Warlock, it will slow down your other um, more pure caster spell casting type progression, but that said, you can still use Warlock pack slots to fuel things like meta magic on sorcerers, and you can convert them into sorcery points. Sorcerer is actually one of the best multi-classes with Warlock because you can basically get short rest sorcery points by converting any leftover pack slots you have into sorcery points before you take a short rest, and then your pack slots come back when you finish the short rest. Another thing I want to mention here is most multi-classes with Warlock are either a, a couple level Warlock dip or a small dip uh, into uh, of another class into a mostly Warlock. So usually you don't want to split the difference too much and you want to take either a little bit or a lot of Warlock, but not like middling amounts of multiple class. Now it's important to note that the, the Hexblade dip is pretty notorious in a lot of cases. You can use this to make single attribute dependent spell sword type characters because it lets you make melee attacks with a one headed weapon with your prism modifier. It also gives you armor, which is pretty crazy, and sorcerers and bards can take full advantage of this. Um, it also gives you shields. Um, and this hexblade dip is one of the most powerful dips in the game and can potentially is potentially a bit problematic just because of how powerful it is. Um, but that said, it is a very powerful dip, and mechanically, it is one of the best Warlock subclasses that you can dip in general. Um, one of the other things that I think is really cool about the Warlock for multiclassing is that invocations in the Pact and the different kind of Pact boons that you have make the class as a whole very flexible to work with a wide variety of other classes and roles. If you want to be a Spell Sword type character, but you don't want to use Hexblade, the fighter can help you a lot in that regard. If you want to be a support type character with your invocations and that kind of thing, you can use cleric or druid to help there. If you want to be a more infiltrator type character or maybe even a better party face, um, rogue potentially can work very well. And just the, the, the Swiss army knife of tools that, that that warlock has out of invocations means that you can make a lot of different characters with a warlock. And you could even have two Warlocks of the same pact and have completely different characters because you've taken different invocations and that kind of a thing. All right, so it is time to summarize and give the, the core Warlock class some ratings. Now, offensively, I'm going to give the Warlock a 4 out of 5 here. Now, the reason for this is because Eldritch Blast on its own is the best damage per round cantrip in the game. Uh, the Warlock also has a lot of 5th level spell slots and, ha a, 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 and a fair amount of oomph behind them. Um, and they have a good combination of troll and blasting and concentration, other concentration spells on their list. And so a Warlock can potentially put out a lot of damage. Uh, now, 
Defensively, I give the Warlock a one out of five. Now, here, here's the reason for this. They don't have good armor, so their AC is going to be pretty poor. Um, they don't have a lot of hit points. They don't have healing. Um, and one of the other things is that even if you have defensive spells, you ha don't have very many spell slots to spam them with. So it's honestly usually better to, like, for example, if you're a Hexblade who does have shield on their spell list, it's oftentimes better to not cast shield so you can use that high level spell slot for something else because if you, you know, say waste a third fourth or fifth level spell slot on shield that isn't a damage or control spell that you could be using instead so defensively with the main things that warlocks want are potentially armor shields which x-blade gives you um, and potentially more low level spell slots to, and defensive spells to use them with now control i give the warlock a four out of five here and this is, again, because the Warlock has a lot of good kind of area of effect control type spells. But they also have forced movement and a whole bunch of it that they can use with Eldritch Blast. So what you can potentially do with a Warlock is create a zone of control with a spell like, say, Hunger of Hadar. And then use the forced movement from your Eldritch Blast that you get from invocations to push or pull enemies into it and keep them in the area and keep them controlled and locked down. And this is something that the Warlock is really good at. Um, it may not be, it's usually a combination of damage and control, but they're really good at manipulating the battlefield and putting your enemies at a disadvantage. Um, the next thing is support. And this is the Warlock's ability to kind of help their allies and that kind of a thing. Now, depending on what pact you take um, and some of the invocations that you get, you can potentially be an okay support. And this is why I've given the class a two out of five. Uh, the core class isn't really designed to support, and so if you want to do this, you'll need to make sure that you take the right invocations and potentially multi-class into other classes to make it happen. You can build a good support warlock if you kind of follow that plan. Next up is skills, and again, I give the warlock a 2 out of 5 here. Um, they ha the main things they have to help with skills are invocations. Um, and you, but with that said, some of their invocations have a lot of really cool out of combat kind of applicability. Like they have one, for example, that lets you cast Disguise Self at will. Um, so there are some some kind of in between the lines and non numeric things that they can do to help skills. But uh, and the reason there are two out of five is because they have this. But if you wanted to lean heavier into skills, again, multiclassing could really help you, and you could actually build a pretty effective skill warlock by doing so. For example, multiclassing with Bard. And finally, complexity. And again, I'm going to give the Warlock a 4 out of 5, much like my other spellcasters. This is a measure of how difficult it is to play the Warlock, and is there's a fairly direct correlation with the amount of decisions you have to make, whether it's on a turn in combat or building your character. And because the Warlock has so many different invocations to pick from, and basically has two subclasses between your Patron and your Pact Boon, um... The amount of different combinations and permutations of a build that you can create is very high. Now, the retraining is also important here because you need to make sure you have the right spells and that kind of thing. So I don't think, uh, while the Warlock can be simple to play because you have relatively limited options, I mean, how many times have you seen the Warlock say, all right, um, I maintain my spell and I cast Eldritch Blast on my turn, even though their combat might be relatively simple to play in a lot of cases, Building the character itself is complicated and managing your pretty limited resources in your spell slots is going to be important. Um, all right. So thanks for watching. This has been my overview of the, the Warlock class. What did you think? I personally love the Warlock class. I use them in a, in a lot of multi-class builds. If you've seen any of my build guide videos, I, I use them quite a bit. Um, I'm even playing a character in a game um, that is a Warlock and he's, he's a sorcerer also, but uh you know, that character is very fun and very powerful. Um, and I think overall, the flavor um, and abilities of Warlock make it one of the most interesting and powerful classes in the game. Um, and it's just overall very fun to play. Important note, if you have a Warlock in your party, make sure you take short rests. They will love you as all of their resources kind of come back and recharge based around that for the most part. Our next class overview is going to be our last one on Wizard in a couple of weeks. Um, and I hope to see you then. So again, my name is Nathan. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.